Hey there, pilots. This is Pete with BananaHobby.com. Welcome to your Ask Pete webisode. Uh, we started up the Ask Pete webisodes a little while back, and uh, unfortunately, I got so busy with things that um, I have to apologize that we did not actually go forth with it. And now we are bringing the Ask Pete webisodes back online, and we are going to make it consistent to where every week um, we will do a weekly Ask Pete webisode. So for y'all that don't know about it, you could basically go and leave comments on, um, on the actual uh, uh, YouTube channel with the Ask Pete webisodes, and I'll be checking these, and you could actually uh, go ahead and ask questions about RC and things like that, and um, I'll go ahead and answer them. I'll pick a few questions and answer them weekly for you. Uh, you can also post these up on Facebook as well. Um, we got some questions in for this, uh, this episode of Ask Pete, and I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it. Um, it actually, I put this request up um, to do this webisode on Tuesday, and now it's Thursday, and uh, I didn't get too many questions in, so you know, by all means, when you have questions about RC, whatever it is, if I could possibly answer it for you, um, I'll do my best. But we're going to go ahead and jump into this episode, this webisode of Ask Pete. And I appreciate everybody that did um, post questions, and uh, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of these in here. Um, let's see, the first question to me is, is um, I have a Spectrum DX6i transmitter, and I am going to be setting up RTH, which is called Return to Home feature, and um, and uh, need to set up failsafe throttle position and how to set up this failsafe. And this was posted by a username by Mary2. Um, you know, I, I actually, the question has a lot of ways to go with what you're asking there. I, I get the idea of what you want to do, but it also depends on what your flight control board is to set up your actual failsafe feature for this. Um, there's so many flight control boards out there now, and what this question, what this, um, this user here is asking, for y'all that don't understand, it's basically asking about how to set up a failsafe and then re return home feature. And what he's talking about, or she is talking about, right now there's a growing popularity in what's called uh, multi-copters. And I actually have my multi-copter sitting right here. I have a few multi-copters. I have some quads. There are uh, hexacopters. There are octocopters, you know, eight blades. Mine right here actually has six blades. And there's a feature on this helicopter, um, depending on what flight control board you have, once again. And what the flight control board is, it's basically a unit that's the central brain of this, this helicopter, of this, uh, this hexacopter that you can actually go into programming and you could set it up with a GPS coordinates um, and a failsafe in there and the return home feature. Uh, first of all, you have to have a GPS function for your, uh, on, your, um, on your flight control board. As you can see on mine, I actually don't have it. I actually need to purchase that. And what it actually does is, if in the event that you're flying FPV or um, something happens with your radio transmi transmission and it loses range and it goes out of range, or something happens to where it doesn't read each other anymore, the actual helicopter will actually go into failsafe mode and it will remember where you set up your, uh, your return to home. You basically set it up. You set up the numbers. Um, is actually programmed into your, your, uh, your GPS and your control board unit on your, on your copter and your copter will actually return to that exact spot and then actually just sit there and hover. Or you can set it up to where, you know, um, it can come back and then it can actually just lower itself at a really slow rate and then actually land safely. Um, this way you don't lose your helicopter, you don't crash it and things like that. So that's what return home is. And this question is a great question, but I'm not sure exactly how to answer it because I don't know what your flight control board is and uh, what setup you're actually using. Uh, the best way to do it is actually I'm going to ask you to Google it on um, actually YouTube it. There's actually s a several setup videos on there that I've seen for uh, setting up failsafe. So thank you for that question. And then, you know, what's funny is the, I had two questions basically pertaining to how to set up failsafe. The next question comes from Kevin Keen, and uh, he's asking, how do you set up failsafe once again? And uh, he's saying, I have a DJI NASA quad, and um, he would like to set up failsafe active when the transmitter is turned off. Um, basically, that goes in line with the first question as well. And you basically want to go to, you know, what I found was I actually went to YouTube and looked it up. There's a couple of users on there that made some videos for how to set up failsafe. And you know what I think I'm going to do is 
I think I'm going to actually go ahead and make a video on how to set up failsafe using a couple of flight control boards. So I guess stay tuned because again, uh, if you have a DJI NASA, you're going to be going into your your uh, NASA assistant programming on your computer, and uh, there's a little blue bar underneath the uh, when you're in the setup screen, and one side will say manual, one side will will be called ATTI. And uh, you want to follow the directions. Uh, th these videos are great. And uh, just follow the, the directions that these guys are giving you right now. There's a couple of good videos out there, and uh, you can actually set up your failsafe. This also depends on, on um, you know, what radio you're using. The previous, the previous question, the, the uh, user is using a DX6i. In your situation here, Kevin, I'm not sure exactly what um, transmitter you're using. But anyway, um, go into your D DJ at the, the NASA Assistant programming and uh, go ahead and set it up from there. That's the easiest way. And uh, check out a couple of the videos on YouTube as well. But thank you for that question. And uh, the third question I have here comes from a user named Farmhand2k. And he's asking, or she's asking, do you have to adjust the timing to high on your signature? Oh, okay, basically he's asking, do, I have, do you have to adjust the... Uh, timing on our um, Genesis Pete Signature Series ESCs. And he says that, I know some other brands don't work well with certain uh, brushless motors and you get that screech at full power. Yeah, that's a common question. And um, because if the timing is off, you get this awful like sounding screeching sound and it sounds like the propeller or your EDF or something like that spinning loose um, or something's loose and, and uh, it's a terrible sound. But on the uh, Pete Signature series and the Genesis Power ESCs, they come pretty much on um, auto timing set. Uh, you can actually adjust it. It also, this will always depend on what motor combination you're going to be using. Uh, if you're going to be using Hacker motors, if you're going to be using Scorpion motors, um, you know, or uh, HET motors, these are all different motors on the market. Uh, so it depends on what motor you are using. And so far, I, I've just left them in um, auto timing and they've actually been really, really working really well. The Genesis Power ESCs uh, under the Pete Signature Series, these ESCs are great. And uh, so far, I haven't really had to adjust the timing. But if you do need to adjust the timing, we sell a little external programming card. And uh, it's really inexpensive. I think it's like, you know, I can't remember how much it is, but it's really inexpensive. And all you have to do is plug it in and then adjust the timing from there. And also, that also depends on your uh, motor KV as well. But I would try it in auto time when it comes in when it comes out of the box. It's already on auto timing. I think it's I think it's mid mid timing, and uh, it's it actually works fine. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's move on to the next question. And it's uh, used by the username Zephyr twenty eleven, and it says um, I have a Spectrum radio, and when you switch models, do you have to rebind? The one you want to use, the one you want to use. Okay, basically, this this person is asking if you have a spectrum radio and uh, if you're going from model to model, do you have to rebind? Um, and the way it looks right here, he sp it's spelled with a K, so I'm assuming that you have a spectrum like a DX6i or DX7 or DX8 or something along that line. And with those radios, no, you don't. You do not have to rebind. Uh, every time you set up models on your your model memory in your actual transmitter and when you go to that particular model the actual receiver and the transmitter will remember each other so there's no rebinding you, you don't have to rebind every single time um, I have had a couple of times where the uh, airplane if you don't fly them for a while or even if you do fly them you know constantly sometimes they come unbound and uh, you go to plug it in you're like wait a minute how come you know it's not reading each other if it's not reading each other and you get your receiver blinking or it's just not, you don't even, you're not even getting a light on the receiver, go ahead and rebind it in that instance there. Okay, so thank you for that question. And uh, there's a question from a Greg, and um, basically Greg is asking what a good affordable battery is for the 61-inch P51 Mustang. And he's saying if, um, if a 4-cell 30C, 4,000 would be too much for that airplane. Um, you know, I'm not actually sure which P51 you're talking about, but in this sense here, I like a good battery, I would say, you know, from our website, I would go with the, the Genesis Power batteries. They're absolutely awesome. Um, 
the uh, 45C, the 55C, and the 65Cs are great. And I don't see you know, why you can't use a 30C in there. Um, but I would probably, on a 61-inch airplane, I would probably go to like a, uh, a 45C at least. Um, you know, just give you a little bit more power and a little cooler run. Um, so I guess, you know, without really not, not knowing which exact P51 it is, I can't really tell you. So uh, maybe post up back again with a question with what exactly which uh, product it is, and I could probably give you more information on what battery would be good for that airplane. All right. And then I got a funny question asking, um, why only pick comments or questions from Facebook and not YouTube? And um, give a shout out to you. This guy's name is Julian. And uh, thank you for that question. And I actually do pick questions from Facebook and YouTube. And that's why I was asking if y'all would, you know, post questions on YouTube on the comment box right below here or post them on Facebook um, or both places. It doesn't really matter. As long as you guys post them, I'll try to go through them and uh, pick out the questions and answer them. And then a couple of other questions that I've, I've seen without any real uh, person asking, uh, there were just questions popped up there, is um, how do you balance a propeller? And the best way I can say of how to balance a propeller is you have to go, well, the, the most uh, effective way, actually. There's a couple of ways. But the best way to do it is actually uh, you want to go to your local hobby shop and pick up a uh, prop balancer. There's several different ones on the market. I know Robart makes one, and the one I use actually is made by a company called Dubro, and it's actually a. Uh, it's either Dubro or I think I think Great Plains makes it. I can't remember, but it's actually a, mag a magnetic balancer, and it works out great. It has two two sides on it, and then you have a centerpiece that you actually insert into the propeller, and then you tighten it down, and then you actually just uh, set it into the magnetic system there. And then the propeller would droop onto one side or the other, and then you'll know which side is heavier. And it's, uh, it's very important for you to have a balanced propeller, because if you don't have a balanced propeller, uh, there would be vibration issues. You would have loose, you know, screws would come loose because of the vib vibration and things like that. So make sure you balance your propellers. And uh, when the propeller drops to one side, you just get sandpaper, pretty much. I use like about 800 grit sandpaper, and I actually just, I actually just uh, sand down the inside of the propeller. Uh, just a little bit at a time, set it back on the balancer, and then see if it actually droops again. And just keep doing that until when you get a probably like a pretty neutral balance so that the prop's not falling to one side or the other. And uh, you have a great balanced propeller there. All right. And the next question is, what is exponential in a computer transmitter? This is a great question. I know a lot of people don't use Expo, and it's actually, we just call it Expo. And basically what Expo is, is it's basically, how do I say this, um, making your flying smoother. Um, when you move the stick, let's say you move the stick uh, half, like, let me grab a transmitter here. All right, excuse me, a little bit of a cold here. Um, let's say you move the stick on a computer radio. This is your full movement, and then this is your half movement here. And at half movement, your control surface is moving, let's say, you know, um, X amount. Let's 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 use this wing for example. When you move the stick halfway there, and your wing is actually moving that much, or let's say that much, and that's it's extremely sensitive in this essence here. So you use Expo, and you actually turn the Expo. It depends which radio you're using. Something because there's a you can go negative and positive Expo, and when you turn up the Expo, what it basically does is, when you move the stick a certain amount, it'll take away the movement. So it makes it not so sensitive. Um, uh, that's probably the best way I could explain it. Um, let's say if you move the stick three quarters of a way and it's moving way too much, so you dial up, the, like I put my expos, depending on airplane, on the aileron I'll have like 35% expo on certain airplanes and then on my 3D airplanes I'll have like 50% expo um, and give, you know, so forth. And basically that just, it smoothens out your stick movement so that not like when you barely touch your stick, it's already moving too much. That's when you turn up the expo, and then you kind of have to fly the airplane and then figure out what is an actual good setup for the expo setting for uh, the particular airplane you're fly flying. So basically what it does is just makes your flying smoother and uh, not so jittery. I know a lot, of, a lot of airplanes have really touchy elevators. So that's exactly where I use my expo most of the time is on my elevator and my rudder too. Um, so play with your expo settings and uh, find out which expo 
numbers actually work best for you. But thank you for that question. And the last question I have here for this webisode of Ask Pete is, can I use super glue on my foam airplanes? This is a great question. And uh, I got to tell you, it depends on what kind of a foam airplane you have. Um, I've come to realize that, first of all, if you have an EPS foam airplane, uh, EPS is basically like uh, that the, the foam that breaks, and it's almost like the, the cooler type foam. If you have an EPS foam airplane, you cannot use super glue on it, period. There's no super glue or no super glue that you can use on there unless the super glue is actually uh, listed on there on the bottle itself saying that it's foam safe. So EPS foam, you have to use foam safe super glue. So always remember that. Foam safe CA, basically we call it. And then if you have an EPO foam airplane, which uh, basically a lot of our airplanes here at Banana, Banana Hobby are coming as EPO now. On EPO, you can actually use um, super glue. Just use regular super glue. And I, I wouldn't suggest using super glue to glue like big parts like wings and stuff together. Uh, just uh, it's too thin. And then sometimes, you know, I would rather use epoxy in that, in that, that case there. But you can use uh, super glue on EPO. I would still try little spots of super glue on the airplane, um, like inconspicuous spots on the airplane or like on the other side or on the inside of the cockpit area or something. Just make sure that super glue is not eating it. You'll see that the super glue, if it eats the foam, it'll just start sinking away and uh, you'll have a little piece of foam missing there. Um, so again, depends on your foam and I would mostly, I would say test it first before you actually go and squeeze a bunch of super glue on there. Uh, I know with the uh, FMS Blitz RC Works airplane aircraft that we carry, I use a lot of uh, CA to do like the the little stuff, like the antennas, the cannons, things like that, and it actually works out really well. Sweet! So we got through this episode or this webisode of Ask Pete. Um, I didn't get too many questions, but I do appreciate the questions that did come along. So please, uh, we're getting these webisodes back online. So if you have any questions from whatsoever, go ahead and post the questions right in the comment box right down below and uh, at least this time we'll have about a week's time here so I can get some more questions but again thank you all always for your support and for watching these videos my name is Pete check out bananahobby.com for uh, the funnest stuff right now there's some new stuff coming and new videos coming as well thank you all always and we'll see you next time with the Ask Pete webisodes